routing, contact center agent uh, support uh, within Cisco. So um, some of the skill set that's required, there's some programming skill set, there's some uh, networking skill set, some router configuration and troubleshooting, um, gateway. Um, but to be honest with you, a lot of my job has to do more with uh, client engagement. And so being that I work in IT, um, all of my clientele are actually Cisco employees. So um, when they have a, a voicemail issue or call routing issues or, or um, you know, somebody couldn't join a WebEx meeting or couldn't make a phone call via Cisco Jab or Cisco Spark, um, my team is tier three operations. So um, we typically take the higher end kind of outages that take place uh, within Cisco. So a lot of my job has to do with uh, kind of the interaction between um, myself and people who are experiencing experiencing issues uh, within Cisco. So um, I would say even though I got my undergraduate degree in computer science, um, very little of my job has to do with actually writing hardcore code. It's more so being familiar with the uh, software applications that Cisco uses um, to support their clientele. Um, so I probably see that more so makes up for like my actual technical skills, um, but more so my job has to do more with my soft skills um, when it comes to actually interfacing with clientele. Cool. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a self-proclaimed non-technical person. So, um, you know, while all of the, you know, um, things that Malcolm just mentioned sound really cool, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not very familiar with the technical piece of um, a lot of what our engineers do. Um, I'm more so focused on the recruiting aspect. So, um, you know, I and more so focus on career development, making sure that you guys have the soft skills that you need to land that job, whether it be with Cisco or anyone else, making sure that your resume is where it needs to be, um, making sure you understand the importance of coming to a career fair or any other um, on-campus engagement opportunities, just really helping you understand the tools you need to be successful, um, obtaining a career with Cisco and, or honestly anywhere. I, I definitely am an Aggie first and foremost, so um, the most important thing to me is making sure that you guys have the tools that you need to be successful with any company, although we would love to have you at Cisco. Yeah, absolutely. But you act like what you do ain't important, Fee. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not technical. <laughs> so when it comes to um, that technical talk, I just like to put the disclaimer out there that I'm, I'm not very technical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that, that, that's fair. But like I said, I mean, um, and it's just speaking from my experience, like a lot of times I've noticed that um, we find really intelligent students who have very strong technical backgrounds um, and, you know, have great resumes and even have relative work experience. But the problem tends to be that they tend to lack that soft skill, the, the, the presentation skills. Um, some, a lot of them lack the inability to, you know, sell themselves, to give that pitch, um, you know, to give themselves an edge to, to give us a reason to pick them over the other thousands of candidates that we see throughout the year. So um, I know that's kind of a bit far-fetched when we're talking about, you know, IT and kind of the tech skills that they need, but um, a, lot of, a lot of times more than not, we find kids who are very um, applicable to the roles that we need as far as the technology and skill set goes. But as far as having that soft skill, that would be something that I would push more for um, places like the School of Engineering and uh, the School of Technology and Science to really push more on their students to develop more on their soft skills. Because, I mean, to be blunt, I mean, we can teach anybody how to code nowadays. We can teach people how to configure routers and switches, but it's really hard to teach people how to be personable and how to write the correct emails, especially when they start going up the chain and things like that. So. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that, I think that's an excellent point. Um, it's really about making sure that you present yourself as the total package, right? Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you right now, we have over 6,000 candidates that have applied to our software engineer roles, right? So um, there's a lot of competition out there, but I can say, um, and speaking on behalf of Cisco, we are very interested in ENT students. Right. Yep. So that that puts you guys at an advantage already. So just knowing that we are looking at you guys and that we're interested in you guys is 
is huge. It's huge. We have tons of other students to look at and, and to know that we want to look at you guys is huge. So Malcolm and I want to make sure that you guys are presented as the total package when you come out and talk to our reps that come on campus. Um, Malcolm and I both vouch for this university a lot. <laughs> so a lot. Right, right. So, so we, we always talk about um, how amazing you guys are. So, you know, really making sure that, you know, you're learning everything you need to learn from Dr. Say and your other professors is important, but we want to also make sure that you're that total package and, and having um, every element of, of what it takes to be an ideal candidate. Absolutely. And I just want to say, like, Malcolm, I've seen, like, Malcolm, you have really flourished. I remember recruiting you, Malcolm. I remember when you were a student. And just to see um, your presentation abilities right now is just, it's a great example of, um, you know, a, a true Aggie coming and, and really, really taking advantage of this opportunity and being successful. So kudos to you as well. Thank you, Faith. But let's not talk about them old days. I don't want to think. I don't want to think about. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about. Them. Um, but yeah, do you guys have any more kind of questions for us? I have a question on the soft skills. Is that something that can be? How can you improve on your soft skills? Um, you want to go, Faith? I can go, but you go first. Okay. So, um, I think. Okay, I'll give you a prime example. And he's actually still an employee at a and right now. So uh, one of the uh, professors who had the most profound effect on me while I was at a and uh, is Professor Edmondson Effort. And I remember both my junior year and my senior year, um, I would have classes with him and he would like make it an incentive to go to places like Toastmasters. Um, and Toastmasters is an organization on campus where they make you do speeches and you know, kind of like their own version of speech therapy where you have to go in front of people and talk about something and they, they count how many times you do your uhs and ums and make sure that you're very articulate when you're presenting whatever you're presenting. And so um, I remember probably at least on three or four occasions, uh, he would actually take us out of class and take us to a Toastmasters uh, meeting that was happening on campus and that would be our class for the day. So instead of actually teaching whatever course I was taking, whether it be I don't know, algorithms or networking security or database, whatever he was teaching at the time, he would actually take his time to take us to places like Toastmasters. Um, and, you know, me personally, like I never had a problem speaking. It was just speaking about things that uh, maybe I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about. And being able to articulately tell that to somebody was uh, a huge benefit for me. So it's not just being able to talk about things that you're passionate about, just being able to talk about anything in general, right? So um, things like Toastmasters help me. Um, I know there's a lot of other things on campus that a provides, like um, uh, the Office of Career Services. Um, they do mock interviews. Um, you know, the Student Cluster Leadership Council, another organization on campus, um, they do resume events, professional events, um, all kinds of things that can help with your the, the social aspect of your uh, professionalism. So uh, as far as what the IT department or, or A&T in that matter could do, I would say maybe drive more activities in your classroom that push for your kids to be social. Because um, I can even recall when I was at a and you know, between 2008, 2012, there were some really smart kids in class, but a lot of them were very introverted and very quiet which there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. Um, it's just, there's a time and a place for that, but there's a, there's, and, and it comes time when you have to very, like really express your ideas. And sometimes like at Cisco, people put you on the spot and they'll be like, hey, Malcolm, uh, what do you think about X, Y, and Z? And there could be your manager, director, his boss and his boss all in the same room. And, you know, even though you're an introvert, you can't really shy down from things like that. You got to be able to sell yourself again. I know I keep saying that word, but for saying that phrase, but you really have to be able to sell yourself uh, at a moment's notice because anything can happen. Somebody could require, require you to send an email, um, give your opinion on something that's, that's crucial to Cisco's infrastructure. Um, you never know. So um, that's why I really push for soft skills. And, you know, any way or any opinion that me or Felicia can give uh, you guys to kind of help drive that home within the IT or or engineering or anywhere within a and um, be glad to do it. So I hope that answered your question. I don't know, Fee, if you want to piggyback off anything I said. 
No, that was perfect. I mean, that's exactly what I was going to say. Take advantage of those opportunities on campus. I know Career Services works really hard to make sure that they provide you guys with um, options from resume critiques to interview workshops, all sorts of um, things that they offer, as well as some of the student groups. So um, I, I really encourage you guys to take advantage of those. I will say I'm currently working on um, developing a career development workshop for specifically for NCANT as well. Um, so you will see something come out about that, hopefully, if not this upcoming spring, definitely in the fall semester. But just take advantage of these opportunities that are given to you. Um, don't let them come out in vain because they will benefit you in the long run. Thank you. Do I have my audio yet? Do I have audio yet? You yes. do? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say we have been doing using this computer all semester, and it's the first first time we've really really had any problems with the mic. Um, so um, everybody on on the uh, on, on the, in the in the room knows about Cisco, but uh, they may not know um, a lot about the company and even where the, the headquarters are. I've been to the I've been to the campus in San Jose. So if you would just give. Um, a brief overview of, of the company, how many employees, what your core competencies are, core, core competencies are, et cetera. Yeah, so I, I can say that, um, you know, obviously Cisco is a technology company. We do software and hardware um, networking company. And we are about 70, almost 75,000 employees. <clears throat> So we um, have offices all over the world, and that's one of the reasons why we promote a lot of our um, our WebEx and telepresence uh, functionalities and features that really allow us to be able to work together across the globe, no matter where you are. Um, we do have five main locations, uh, one of them being in RTP, North Carolina. That's where Malcolm and I sit. That's right outside of Durham. Um, and then we also have our main headquarters, which is located in San Jose, North um, San Jose, California. And then we also have an office in Lawrenceville, Georgia, Richardson, Texas, and then uh, Boxborough, Massachusetts. So those are our five, five main locations. But again, we have um, employees that work all over the globe. Um, for instance, my director sits in Colorado at her house. Um, I, I work from home. I think Malcolm's at home today as well. So a lot of us are mobile workers, um, but we do have those five main locations. Um, RTP is the second largest location amongst all of our main sites. Uh, right now we're about five or 6,000 employees total in RTP. Um, and I'm not sure how many there are in San Jose, but that's our main headquarters. San Jose campus is extremely large. Um, it, 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 to me, I think it's, it's larger than a and campus, actually. It's, it's a very large uh, site. It's at least 20,000 if I had to put a number on it. Got it. Um, yeah, so, you know, San Jose is our headquarters, but RTP is our second largest. The great thing about RTP, which I think um, makes us, the, the the best site is because uh, you'll find that some of our locations focus more so on a particular skill set or a particular um, function. So for instance, I'm just making this up, Boxborough may be heavy on software engineers, whereas Richardson, Texas may, um, their office may be strong in the supply chain. Um, but RTP, we hire for all different functions within our, within our location. So we don't just heavily focus on engineers, but we also have um, a, lar a large group for finance. We have a large group for marketing. We have a large group for IT. Um, we're kind of evenly spread in RTP, which gives you more opportunities if you were to come work in the RTP location. Because sometimes going into a role, you think you want to do this job, but you've never done it before. So it's kind of hard to say as a student, right? It's kind of hard to say what you really want your first job to be or where you want to go in your career. Um, but being in a, lo a location that you have many options allows you to move internally into different roles and explore different groups. Um, typically, we generally expect you to stay in your role anywhere from one to three years before looking to move anyway. Um, so just knowing that you have those options in terms of cross-functional movement. Is, is a good perk about being located in RTP, but definitely when it comes to recruiting, you're welcome to work in any location that you desire. I don't know, um, can you think of anything else I may have missed, Malcolm? Um, just maybe like kind of the, maybe the correlation, because I think a lot of people think that, uh, you know, just because you may get a degree in IT, that, that that necessarily means that you have to work in the IT department, and that's not necessarily the case. I mean, we've got, 
a lot of people that work in IT who didn't even get a degree in uh, in IT. I can think right now, my first two managers, one, his, uh, my first manager, his degree was in biology, and then my second manager, his degree was in history. So um, we know folks that get out and get an IT degree and they work in sales, they work in engineering, they work in services, they work in security, and some, yeah, they, some of them do end up in IT. Um, you know, and then I use myself as an example as well. I have a computer science degree, which is primarily software engineering, software development, yet I work in IT and I'm more of a networking uh, business analyst, if, if such a thing exists. Um, so, you know, you don't have to pigeonhole yourself into thinking, well, I, I, I work in IT or, I, or my major's IT, I should get an IT job. Um, you can actually use the skill set that you're getting um, that, that A&T provides in their IT curriculum and apply that to many, many aspects at Cisco. So, um, you know, students don't have to pigeonhole themselves. And Dr. Say, I think we lost you again. So, um, I'm not sure if anyone else on the call has any questions. You're more than welcome to ask. I had um, a question actually. Um, sure. So I, I heard that you said that you work and uh, do some programming, um, not a whole bunch, but could you kind of talk about what you do with it um, in your job? Absolutely. Um, well, not anymore. Um, it's probably been years since I've actually had to do any real code. But um, when I first started, uh, Cisco had, uh, well, they still have a technology called Contact Center Applications and Technology. And um, I don't know if you've ever, like, called your bank or called Home Depot or Target, or even a and for that matter. And they give you that little prompt saying, you know, press one for this, press two for that, things like that. Cisco has their own in the uh, call scripting. And the Contact Center Applications team within IT is responsible for supporting that. Um, those scripts that you hear, uh, nine times out of 10, they're, they're Java-based. Um, most of the code that's in that program you don't have to really write from scratch, but any kind of custom element that you want to create or anything that you want to alter within it is all Java based. So um, I probably have written less than 20 lines of code since I've been at Cisco and it's most of it was in automated environments. Um, so, and that's a big point I want to touch on too. Um, a lot of the, the big strong direction that Cisco is headed in is towards automation. So it's like you can't just be a networking engineer or a business analyst anymore. Those roles are no, are no longer isolated. At some point, if you work for a technology team, you're going to have to be able to understand code because Cisco is moving towards this more safe, uh, agile work environment. And the kind of work environment that this is proposing is going to force networking engineers and really hardcore engineers who have kind of been away from code the majority, if not all of their careers, they're gonna to have to be able to understand code to a certain point. Even if they're not really necessarily writing code themselves, they'll be working in environments that autonomously produce results and statistics and metrics. So they're gonna to have to be able to understand those aspects of their, of their team, their job, their group, whatever they're supporting. So um, programming is important, but it's not necessarily an aspect of, of writing hardcore code from scratch. It's more or less being able to try to figure out how to make your job easier, automating things. And if you're not necessarily the one that's automating things, you gotta be able to understand the things that are being automated for you and aspects in regards to your job. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, yes, perfectly, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Yep. <clears throat> so I have a question. Um, sure. So you said that you, uh, it's like you said right now, you don't need, you can only learn one uh, skill set. So the question I have is, how do you um, how do you approach these situations where, like it's like you said, you go to a department that you don't necessarily are supposed to go into, but you know you learn all these different skills. How do you approach those situations without like getting overwhelmed by learning new skills or you know learning a whole new environment entirely? Uh, that's a great question, and um, I'm actually experiencing that right now for the third time in my career. So. We've had a new reorg within IT. And so the job that I've explained to you that uh, I do, I will no longer be doing. 
uh, I've been moved to the virtual collaboration team. So I no longer support the UC aspect of Cisco. So no more phones, voicemails, contact center. It's more so supporting Cisco WebEx, Cisco Jabber, and Cisco Spark um, from a voice perspective. So making sure people can make Spark calls, people can make Jabber phone calls, and making uh, being able to join WebEx meetings. Now, to be blunt, I don't know what the hell that even means. But the good thing about it is that um, I'm around people who do know what that means. I have a manager who understands that I'm coming from a UC background, so she's not just going to throw me to the wolves and expect me to be able to fight for myself. Um, it's a mix between um, ha knowing who to talk to, uh, knowing who to reach out to, um, having that good uh, rapport with your manager so they understand where you're coming from. But it's also uh, the other part of it is on you to make up for anything that you're missing out on. If uh, Cisco and uh, the Cisco knowledge that's out there, like if you were to become a Cisco employee, is vast and it's accessible to everybody who's a Cisco employee. So, um, you know, if you don't know something, the best thing to do is to go to CiscoCEC.com and, you know, put it in the search bar and, you know, just start doing your own research. I mean, you have. You have resources within your team. You've got group members, you have a manager, you have a team, you have a product owner, you have a manager. You have people you can reach out to, but it's also it's also upon you to kind of do your own investigation, do your own research, and try to learn as new technologies you're gonna be supporting on your own. So to a certain extent, you have to be kind of self-motivated, but you know, most of the time, people are not gonna just throw you to the wolves. They know that you're new. Um, they know that you don't know everything. You might be smart, but you just don't know everything. Um, they're going to give you time to get up to speed and get acclimated to whatever new technology you're going to be supporting. Um, however, it's going to be kind of on you to kind of set the pace to how and when you learn that technology and how in-depth you're going to go into it. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Yep. Um, do I have sound yet? Okay, I think I have sound now. we got the meter yep. Um, I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, so uh, I lost most of the thoughts that I was having. Uh, I think this is an excellent conversation uh, that both Felicia and Malcolm are having with us. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind is that um, they'll talk a little bit about the Cisco partnership. Uh, I've been in A&T since uh, I think 2009. And, um, you know, the Cisco partnership. We lost you again. I think he was asking about the Cisco partnership. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, yeah. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, that's probably more of a question for me. Um, so, yeah, it has skyrocketed. Um, the partnership between Cisco and A&T has um, really developed a lot over, honestly, the past semester. Um, and, and there's a lot of great things that we're trying to continue to bring down the pipeline for you guys. Actually, Dr. Gloucester is coming to Cisco's campus tomorrow to have some meetings with some of us to talk about, you know, strengthening our relationship. But um, where do I start? <laughs> so in terms of uh, the College of Science and Technology specifically, as you all know, we do have the Cisco Net Academy in there. Um, over the past couple of semesters, we've been working with the uh, Cisco Net Academy folks a little bit more to try to make sure that you guys have the tools that you need to be successful if you decide to take that course. Um, ideally, we would love for as many of you as possible to get um, certifications. I know I, I, I see some folks on the call that I know for sure have gotten their certification. Um, so congratulations to you guys. But um, we also were able to get some equipment donated to you guys. Cisco donated over $250,000 worth of equipment so you guys can get some more hands-on experience, actually really touch and feel this hardware. Um, it's really important for us to not only help you guys successfully obtain a job in the technology field, but also we want when you get into these careers that you feel comfortable and confident, right? Um, I, I hate hearing stories about students that come to internships and aren't confident um, when, when it comes to some of their other peers. So we want to make sure you guys have the, the tools that you need to have that confidence. So um, making sure you guys got that equipment was really important. We're also going to be offering um, a PEGA curriculum. Um, actually, uh, Professor Hogan is teaching that. PEGA is a skill, for those of you that aren't familiar with PEGA, PEGA is a skill set that is highly desired in the IT field. Um, and it is going to be something that's offered at NCANT and not many other student, uh, schools offer it right now. 
So if you all decided to take that course, um, it would be something you definitely want to highlight on your resume. Um, and I think it would give you more of a competitive edge, especially if you were looking to get into a career um, in the IT field. We also have the um, Cisco Apprenticeship Program, and um, I think I saw one or two names on this list earlier. I can't see the full list, but I think I have one of my um, apprenticeship candidates on the call as well. But um, the Cisco Apprenticeship Program is a great opportunity um, for students to really get more hands-on experience working on-site with Cisco. Um, just a brief synopsis a quick overview of what that program essentially is. It's a four-year degree program, um, and there are certain courses that you have to take, and you do have to get accepted into the program, but you would take um, standard curriculum at North Carolina A&T your freshman and sophomore year, and then going into that junior and senior year, you would actually be on campus in our RTP location, um, working in different groups within Cisco and getting paid by people. So um, really, really great opportunity. If you guys wanted to learn more about that, we definitely can come back and talk to you more about that in depth. Um, but North Carolina a and is the first university in the United States that we are doing this program with. So um, huge opportunity for you guys. Definitely want to make sure you're aware of it um, and, and take advantage of it if it's of interest to you. Um, the cool thing about those last two years of the program, the junior and senior year, um, you come and work at Cisco, but you not only work for one group, you rotate into a variety of different groups. So you'll get a better feel for exactly what your niche is, right? And, you know, I said it earlier, a lot of times we'll graduate and we'll think we want to do one job and find out three months in, this sucks. I hate this. Like when I graduated, I, I went into um, Fidelity and I was working a job where I had to sit there and look at a computer all day and figure out spreadsheets. That's not for me. I absolutely <laughs> hated it. Um, and then I had to find another job. So um, you know, taking advantage of internships or something like this apprenticeship program is a good way for you to kind of dabble in a couple of different areas to get a feel for what you actually would like to do before um, going into a particular career. So those are the things that we have going on over in the College of Science and Technology. Now, we also have um, some things going on across campus over in the College of Engineering that you guys are more than welcome to take advantage of as well. Um, one of the things that we're offering over in the College of Engineering is uh, Engineer in Residency Program. And essentially what that is, we have a Cisco employee that will come to the university for one semester and dedicate that semester to teaching curriculum. Um, this is a great opportunity for students because it allows you to get taught from a uh, industry professional. So it really allows you to just bounce ideas off of that person, really get a good understanding of the industry trends, making sure that you really know the things that you need to know to be successful in corporate America, especially in the tech industry. Um, right now, those courses that are being taught are networking courses. And ideally, the, uh, the, the goal behind this is that um, taking those courses will prepare you for that CCNA exam. Um, right now, we have Lonnie Harris taking that course. I think some of you are familiar with Lonnie. Um, and we have an amazing person coming next semester to teach as well. So um, definitely a great opportunity for you guys to um, get taught from an industry profession professional. Um, but also, it's someone that you can go to if there's an industry professional that is going to actually be on your campus three to four days a week um, that you could just ask questions, right? Um, there's some students that are interviewing with Cisco and they'll just go over to Lonnie because they know he's been successful at the company and they could just go to his office and ask him questions on, on, on you know, what, how to approach the interview or what are some things that you think I should know or, you know, just really get that advice from an industry professional. So we have dedicated support for you guys on campus um, all semester. Um, and we've done that since last spring. We have someone now this fall, and again, we have someone coming in spring as well. So ideally, that'll be an ongoing thing. Um, but th that's just some of the many things that we're we're trying to continue going on with you guys. As I mentioned before, um, I'm trying to put together a career development workshop, and that's going to be more of a series, about 12 weeks, where I will be leveraging individuals like um, Malcolm and <laughs> some of our other um, rock stars here at Cisco to come out and work with you guys um, on a biweekly basis. Just to make sure that you guys do have that soft skill element as well, right? Trying to provide you guys with some additional support as it relates to that. So that's something that um, will be coming up in the future. But yeah, we are 
full steam ahead. We're really taking advantage of um, the, the momentum that we have going from a partnership standpoint. Really want you guys to understand how committed we are to your success as, um, as a student body. So definitely um, take advantage of these opportunities because the only way we can keep them going is if you guys express interest both with your professors and with our Cisco um, professionals that come out on campus. See, you forgot one. I, I, that's very possible. There's so many. I was trying to write them off <laughs> of the brain. <laughs> I did not have um, four months today, so I'm kind of slow. No, that's all right. I ain't ate today, so you lucky I'm here. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we also have the um, the uh, ANT Capstone um, project yes. through IT. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that the IT Senior Project is a year long course. Um, and this is actually the second year that we've done this. Last year was our kind of guinea pig year. Um, so myself and Trey Harding, who's not here today, unfortunately, um, he, Trey is currently the campus manager for a &T. And so he works with Felicia and myself a lot when it comes to organizing um, things for the career fair and organizing different events on campus. Um, but he's also the co-project advisor for me. And so what we do, we visit the, uh, senior IT class at the beginning of, of the semester and um, we present a potential IT project for the senior students to work on, one lucky group. And um, when, once we select that group, we actually hire them on as interns uh, for the school year. So from August until May, uh, when they finish their senior project course and they graduate, um, and they get paid. So um, this is the second year we ran the program the first year. Uh, we had three lucky students, um, Xavier Parker Smith, David Hoy, and Timothy, God, I can't remember his last name. Timothy um, Jones. But after they finished the project and they graduated, um, two of them actually came back as full-time Cisco employees. Um, and so as Pete as said, when it comes to partnerships, we're really trying to help solidify that bridge that we have between a and and Cisco. Um, so it's like, you know, we, if we bring you guys in the door, whether it be through the Capstone Project, um, the, the, um, the program that Pete was talking about or an internship, um, we want to bring you guys in for the long haul. It's not temporary. We want to bring you guys here to stay as long as you actually, uh, express interest and you guys want to be here. So. I think that was all of them that to say. <laughs> yeah, we still can't hear them. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I, I will tell you that Felicia did offer for us to use WebEx for this um, event. And um, I said, no, we'll use Zoom. And I guess, <laughs> you guys, I guess you guys can see what the result is. Um, yes, yeah, so while I've got my sound, I'm looking desperately at my mic monitor. Uh, so if I can, I'm gonna try to manually keep my sound up. Um, the, one of the things that, that uh, I, I really like about our program, and I mean our department now, uh, the CSC department on, under Dr. Gloucester's leadership, uh, he has allowed us to do some things that are very, very unconventional and unorthodox in academics. Um, for example, the apprenticeship program. That requires a lot of modification to our existing curriculum that other departments on our campus and on other campuses just would not allow. Mm -hmm. and it, it's just not done. What we did with that, with, with that curriculum in short order, not years, but in a matter of weeks, we made some modifications that allowed us to fit the apprenticeship program in without disrupting the other students' curriculum. Uh, so those types of things. Uh, and Cisco has actually been um, very flexible too in working with us. And because we have so many uh, high, high, um, high end, uh, high profile a and uh, alums at Cisco, they've worked with the corporation because companies are just as reluctant to work with universities as universities are reluctant to work with companies. And so that's why this doesn't happen very often. For example, the, the senior capstone course. So that is a um, um, a very valuable thing. But but it's because we are we are nimble. Another thing I like what Malcolm said. Malcolm is a computer science alum, and um, you know our computer science program is is excellent. I mean it's it's probably one of the best in the country under former chair Dr. Dozier's leadership, um, and. Um, um, but he's doing other things, right? He's doing other things. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do is we try to find information technology in a way 
that makes it most valuable to U.S. students. Um, we, we take a very business focused view of IT while still marrying ourselves to the technology. So um, yeah, we're doing a lot of things. Uh, I saw a kid doing a configuration to a, a, a driverless vehicle the other day using the Cisco gear, 200 and something thousand dollars. I think, I think Felicia said $250,000 worth of gear. Um, very fancy stuff, so. Um, uh, I guess, um, uh, does, do any of you have Uh, we lost you again. Uh, but I think what he was saying is, anybody else have any more questions? I'm good now. I might want to contact um, Felicia, Felicia a little later and ask her some questions personally. Yes, Kendrick, I, I knew I saw, I thought I saw you. This, this is one of my CCNA guys. <laughs> Absolutely, you have my contact information, so definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I do want to um, just share with you all um, that we are currently looking for software engineers um, to work in our IT department. So um, if any of you are looking for an internship or full-time opportunities, we are desperately looking for some additional software engineers. I will tell you there are some prerequisites um, that are kind of non-negotiables, unfortunately. Um, we do require that you have a minimum GPA of 3.0 um, and that you are authorized to work in the United States. Those are some of two of the biggies that we really cannot budge on. Um, but if you meet those minimum qualifications and you're looking for an opportunity, um, please feel free to um, reach out to me directly or you can forward uh, your resume to Dr. Say and he can send that to me. My contact information is fewatson at cisco.com. Um, you can see my username on the screen, but again, that's fewatson at cisco.com. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about opportunities, but I can tell you for, for sure right now, we're definitely looking for software engineers for IT, both full-time and interns. Um, okay, yeah. So, yeah, if there are no other questions, I mean, we're having so many problems. I think all of you saw my note about um, writing, having a one-page write-up about this discussion. Um, we're having problems, so I'd like to go another few minutes, but I'm gonna end here and thank uh, both Malcolm and Ms. Watson for this excellent presentation. Uh, everybody wants to work at Cisco. That's what I was trying to say when my, when my sound went out. Everybody wants to work at Cisco and uh, they're a wonderful company. Our students that are uh, working there are um, very happy. And that student's name uh, was Timothy Jones, uh, Malcolm, that you had. There you go, thank you, sir. You, you got three good ones. I mean, you got three of the best people in our department. That shows that you know people want to work at Cisco, but they were three of our top students. Um, Felicia, Malcolm, Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, and uh, last bit, um, my username uh, for Cisco is also up there. Um, you can just throw it at Cisco at the end of that. So if you guys have any more uh, technical questions, uh, IT related questions, um, feel free to contact me, and uh, I have 30 days until I graduate my master's degree. So, Fee, I know I've been running from you this year, but I get my life back next year, so I'll, I'll be helping with recruiting more next year. Good for you. That's awesome, Malcolm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I, I, think, I think you were telling us goodbye, Dr. Say. I think you're trying to. Yeah, he awesome. did in the chat. I see it in the Thank chat. You guys. Have a good one. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>